I finally made it to the 3D um, scanning stage. So I basically used iPhone's True Depth camera in order to scan scan user's face, and it's done in a manner that is so smooth and um, just really elegant, if that's the right word to put it. Um, anyhow. Um, the first difference I've sort of implemented was uh, the home screen and the home screen basically um, involves some 3D elements that are um, implemented using um, reality kit instead of scene kit which is a big jump when it comes to the app development since uh, reality kit is a lot more a lot newer so it, 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 Apple is actively maintaining it as well as um, it just being such a better platform to implement anything. Uh, first of which, we, um, you go to the home screen, you tap either scan new face or 3D live view, which I which is only for debugging. But what happens is um, it basically shows you like a light, uh, like a depth map of like a point cloud of like your face, and that, I'll um, show it to you very soon. So this is a s statistic that I um, collected from uh, Google and um, it basically uh, signifies that the vast majority of people own an, who own an iPhone, um, they own an iPhone that was, was manu manufactured after um, the iPhone X uh, that basically removed the home screen. So meaning that most iPhones, most iPhone users own an iPhone that has a face ID. Um, whereas LiDAR, on the other hand, is only available for pro devices. So by using the face ID as a sensor to map the user's face instead of using uh, the back facing LiDAR, um, I think it's gonna be a lot more accessible to the general public. So that's why I chose the face ID. Yeah, and um, second of all, no more costly third party um, SDK purchases are needed. Everything can be done in house. No more LiDAR, as I said before, or external 3D scanners. So that's one perk. Uh, the way face ID works, as you would know, is that it basically shoots these tiny um, infrared lights onto your skin and uh, the background and it basically collects the depth data you buy that um, there's a dot projector inside your iPhone um, so it is just like that and um, the way iPhone um, face ID works you can also co collect um, the color information at a given point so it can quite literally generate a point cloud that is uh, that also contains RGB values. So um, the right image is basically a demonstration of that. I'll actually demo it live on my device real soon. I made the use of open source photogra uh, photogrammetry libraries instead of using um, the propri proprietary softwares so everything is an MIT or BSD to clause license, which means that commercial there are no commercial um, restrictions put into place, which is amazing, which is great. I also built a Python wrapper for C++ based de based dependencies, which I'm going to talk about it real soon. And this Python wrapper can be accessed by anything you can uh, host host a REST API uh, using Fast API or Flask. Or Django, and then you can easily connect it with, you know, the Python wrapper that I made. Um, and the first demonstration I would like to show is this image that basically shows a jar, sort of like an aluminum can, in fr um, on top of a box. Uh, the reason I chose this obviously is because they're vastly different shapes. And as you can see, um, you basically have to capture multiple um, photos from a different angle of the subject. And what this does, it, it basically creates this depth map. And finally, you can convert it to a um, 3D object below. I'll show it to you real soon. And this is very similar to how Apple's Object Capture API works. 
And this object ca capture API is basically about converting uh, multiple 2D images with depth information into a 3D object. And uh, because it only works on Mac OS, um, Monterey, um, you can't really host it on a server. Uh, because Mac OS server isn't a thing, number one. Number two, most servers run Linux. So it doesn't run Mac OS. So you have to kind of find your own um, SDK for converting a 2D image to a 3D object. And the, the S o library I used was Open3D, released by Intel. And it's open source, as I said, it's public domain. I believe it's BSD license, but I, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's BSD license. Um, but no commercial restrictions put into place, that's for sure. And this is going to be the result. And I'll do a little live demo just for this feature. So I'm first going to go to my VS Code. And I'm going to run this um, script, python run.py box can, uh, which is going to be the pre-installed uh, data set of the box depth information. So there are a couple of really interesting files here. So there's the calibration.json, which is basically uh, you basically I'm going to have to specify a specific uh, number for each dev each iOS device. So if you're filming it on an iPhone 14 Pro, it has a different number uh, compared to iPhone maybe 13, uh, since their cameras are slightly different. So uh, these distortion values are available on de developer.apple.com. So these are just constants, so it can always change. I mean, it doesn't change. Um, and um, the depth information, depth one, two, three, four, five, these basically match the video one, two, three, four, five, and they each indicate the uh, the shot that the person took um, from a sp specific angle. Um, these assets are actually available online. There are a bunch of people who took just uh, an image of an object from different angles and just post it online so that the user can test out the um, 3D mapping feature. Um, the API itself is really simple. It's a REST API. You can just call it out. So first of all, I just wanted to explain that it does run on the um, it does run on web. So I basically host on a digital ocean container uh, that I dockerized. So um, first of all, if I, if I go to hello fam, sorry, health app healthcam.apps.johnsong.com it says healthcam backend is running so it does appear to be running it does work but today I'm just gonna for convenience sake, I'm just gonna run it locally so if I run this script what it does it basically converts a 2d image to a 3 3d object uh, by using the Python wrapper for the open 3d uh, dependency which is written in C++ quite annoying but it is what it is um, Python is not a low-level language is it so yeah I'm gonna go to this website and then I'm gonna enter um, slash API process 3d and the subfolder name which is box underscore can and it will load it will make a get request and what it does is boom it shows you this thing right here and um, what what's gonna happen after is it's gonna generate a 3d um, 3d model of what's gonna happen so this is it this is a 3d model that was generated from this image so these um, triangular mesh that are surrounding the, the object basically represent each frame that the user took. So the user basically took almost like a panorama. It's not a panorama, but took a bunch of different photos um, going around the object. And what this basically does, it converts the uh, depth data, which is in point cloud, into this mesh. And I'll explain it later. Uh, if I show you the app, it's going to make a lot more sense. 
Um, yeah, so this is what it does. It's pretty sick. Um, but next up, I'll just quickly demo the smartphone app that I developed just for this. Um, okay, let's do this. So this is obviously my phone. And if I open up, uh, what will happen is it's going to lead you to the home screen. Um, it's kind of redesigned um, from sc a little scratch. Um, um, and it's using Reality Kit. So it's just a demo of a 3D rendering. Um, it's using the latest framework. And uh, yeah. Um, and um, if, I, if I just proceed to click 3D Live View, you can see my face, but you're gonna see something really interesting. So it appears to be a flat image, is it, does it? But once you kind of pan around, you will soon realize that it is not a flat image. It is, a, once again, a 3D scan of my face. And if I turn around like that, it's gonna map a little more through information around my face. And these are all point clouds, so there are a lot of like missing gaps in between. And the way to inter interpolate those um, gaps is to use the API that I created um, on the web. Um, the um, yeah, the basically converts the point cloud to a three D mesh as I explained before. But yeah, this is it. This is basically the thing that I guess everybody anticipated. Um, yeah, so it is three D. Pretty cool stuff. And um, yeah. And there's another feature I developed, which is scanning my face. And uh, I know the user interface is a little weird right now because it's in the early stage, but it does work. So what's gonna happen is if I take a photo like that, it's gonna take the f image data and it's also gonna map the depth data. It's gonna save both of them into the folder. And then maybe from the side, I'm gonna take another shot. And in the actual app, we're gonna to have to show, show show them like the prompts. Um, you know, take a picture of your side view, your front view, and that kind of thing. I'm gonna take another photo like that. Maybe towards the top, maybe towards the bottom, like that. And then what's gonna happen is if I press export, it's gonna generate a zip file, a zip archive file. If I save it, what's gonna happen? is it is going to basically see it's basically gonna generate these bin files which contain um, the depth and the video information um, and you might think this kind of looks familiar doesn't it and it looks familiar because we've seen it before and these files are the same files as the one in uh, that was used for our box can demo. So as you can see, these also share the uh, bin file extension and had uh, and cont um, and possess like a similar naming scheme. So yeah, this is just how you basically convert a um, a two D image to a three D uh, mesh, and basically um, it. I haven't implemented it yet, but the app basically has to make a, a request to the server and basically transfer all the image files and the depth files, which which aren't that big because they're 640 um, by like 430. So um, it's gonna be fairly quick, but yeah, I'm gonna have to basically implement that. That's the only step um, that's left. But once again, the 3D uh, mapping feature works perfectly fine and um, yeah and the exporting feature of the depth information also works pretty well so th that's it thanks for watching